God's hand is indeed upon us. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. It is wonderful to be all together again, praising our Heavenly Father. You know, sometimes you read the Word of God and certain words and certain things stand out. For me, it was a semicolon that stand out, stood out. And I thought it was really interesting. Psalm 23 Verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I have all that I need. I looked at that semicolon and I went and I wanted to see what I could replace it with. And one of the words that came up was so. And so I wrote it in my notes and I wrote it, read it again and I said, the Lord is my shepherd, so I have all that that I need. And it made me ask a question. If I was talking to someone in today's day and age and I said that I have all I need, if we're honest and truthful, more than likely you and I would associate that we are well physically, we are well financially, we're doing good. We have a nice camper, we have a nice boat, we have a nice house, Life is good. But is that what psalmist meant here? Our physical body is an interesting thing, right? We're four minutes to six minutes away from death. Anything can happen and in four to six minutes you're gone. If you're without oxygen. If you go without food... You might be able to survive one week to two weeks. But if you go without water, three to seven days is all that you're going to get. So sooner or later, each one of us will face the eternity. And we have an amazing time that's coming up where we spend a couple weekends sharing the gospel with our neighbors, reminding each other that we cannot guarantee a single minute of our own life. A human needs basic things to survive. A shelter is also one of them. You could probably argue that point, maybe depending on where you live or where you could live, you could survive under a palm tree, but sooner or later you're going to need a shelter. It made me think further. If that's the case, and we look at the world, the world's doing everything it can to capitalize and maximize on your short span of life. And so in a matter of a day, you go through four to 10,000 ads that are attacking and trying to distract you from your shepherd. They're trying to present you everything that they can. They're trying to grab your attention. Every other ad on Facebook is some form of a a post, I mean, is an ad. There is a battle that's happening for yours and my, if we can look at it from the world's perspective, maybe it's the physical body, our, our resources. But the scripture says that we're not just a body, But we also have a spirit and we have a soul. And Matthew reminds us and says, don't be afraid of the one that can kill your body. But God can also destroy not just the body, but the soul. So when we live in a time when the world is trying to do everything it can to distract you, when I read that psalm, I said, the Lord is my shepherd, amen. But do I have all that I need? And it's a tough question to answer because we understand that we live on this earth, we work, we do everything we can to provide for ourselves and our families. And it's important and we must do those things to be able to stay, stay fit, healthy, care for those that are around us, care for the needs of people around us. But I wanted to look at something that 
Personally, I thought it was interesting, a distraction that I didn't come across previously. In Thessalonians 5, verse 23, we're reminded again that may God of peace make your whole in every way. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until the Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Paul understood that there's going to be a war, not just against our body, but it's going to be against everything. Our soul. And there are going to be many reasons for us to leave the path that the shepherd is guiding us on. Many will pull away to graze on a better green grass somewhere and look for other better opportunities. But sooner or later, they realize that the call of the shepherd is the only way that they should follow because everything else will lead into distraction and potential destruction. And there was an interesting term that came up to me um, as I was researching and looking into this. It is the concept of trouble-free faith. It is a faith that claims that it can offer a lot more than what Christ has promised. And maybe you have heard the idea that if only you have faith and you have enough of faith, you can receive things, you can prosper, and you can do a lot. And that is true. Trouble-free uh, faith says that we can also change the world. If we would just simply go on living with our faith, the world will be a completely better place, a different place. It will be trouble-free. It would be almost heaven on earth. But it's a claim that Christ never made. It's a promise that he has never made. The problem with trouble-free faith is that it forgets a key point, and that is the second coming of Jesus Christ. And so we get comfortable, and we do everything we can, but we forget that his coming is near. And I think we can all agree that we live in a time when we can see a lot of things around us happening that are also speaking of that. And so I wanted to leave three promises for each one of us today this morning that will help us to not get distracted or to come back to. When the world tries to take you captive, I want you to think of these three things that were promised to the disciples and to us that are essential, I think, for you and I, especially in this time that we live in. Promise number one, the promise of resurrection. Jesus said that I will not leave you as orphans. I will come back. And not only that, Jesus demonstrated the resurrection for all of us to see. Maybe not physically. We, we didn't see with our own eyes, but we know that his grave is empty. We know that he is a good shepherd and he leads by example. Promise number two, he promises us the Holy Spirit. He lives with you and he will help you. And I don't know if there are those in this room that uh, can testify and say, no, no, it has never helped me. But sometimes we don't want its help. And we put it aside. We don't want to hear it. And we turn the volume down. But the Holy Spirit is there to help us. And promise number three, the promise of Christ's return. He promised to come back and take us from this earth. The promise that Jesus gave his disciples is, is, is critical for our Christian faith. And it also helps us to overcome in this fallen world the trouble that we might face. 
If we can come back to those three promises and remind ourselves, then maybe it would be easier to say, I do have all that I need in Christ. The world offers no hope, and the only thing that they can do is offer you another solution or another resolution, but it lasts short for a little time. The resurrection provides the answer to the problem of death, and the Holy Spirit provides the strength that we need to overcome sin and to grow holy. And Christ's return provides hope that Jesus eventually will make everything right again. And so when I read that and I said, all that I need, I asked myself a question, Lord, what's in the way? What else do I need? What else is getting in between me and you and this word so? And I was convicted. There should be nothing. Because his promises are good and we know that he will fulfill them. And so as we get ready to pray, my dear friend, Jesus has fulfilled the two of them. And today there's still the third one that's pending. He hasn't returned. And so as you sit here today, you search your heart and you ask yourself, is there anything that's in the way? Are you careful what shepherds you're following? Do you hear your shepherd's voice on a daily basis? And if Jesus is your shepherd, then I have good news for you. He is all that you will need in this life. And so I want to give thanks to him today to give him glory and honor for protecting, watching, and keeping us if we're willing to follow him and let him lead as our shepherd. Let us stand and give glory and honor to him. Amen.